Come on, God. Shalom. Another day, another day. Hope all is well with you guys. Got a few scriptures to feed you guys. You know, the daily bread. And daily bread is good for your soul. Good for edification. Good for clarification and direction. And of course, to keep thee in all thy ways. That's what we dash our foot against the stone. Let's go. Um, I'm in a book of um Hosea. I'm using um Psalms, but I'm I switched it up today. Um, and it's definitely I'm actually glad I went to Hosea, cause it's um we need to know the re the um the importance the importance of repentance. So us as us being Christians and believers in Christ, I think um globally we took like repentance as a joke. We're not taking it as, as as serious. Not as a joke, but we're not taking it as serious as we should. We're taking it as like something light. You know, it's a very serious matter. And I um I think that's the main reason. That's what's affecting the world right now. Is no one wants to repent. You know, not even people who even like preachers, people that's really sold out for God. I think uh the enemy has solely like deceived us from like repenting. For every little thing that we do, every known thing, every know everything that you said, everything you thought, to the intentions, to the motive, you know, even into the entertainment that we indulge in. So I think that plays a big role in our life, and um, I think that's why the world is really falling. The world is falling apart because we we just not repenting, and we're not walking away from the things that we indulge in, and we're not, you know, we're not trying to purify ourselves from our old selves, you know, it's like, it's like shedding yourself, it's like shedding yourself, it's like a snail, you know, that turns into a butterfly, we have to turn into, we got to allow God to let us, we got to allow God to transform us into a butterfly, but, you know, we want to stay in that first, that first, you know, process as a snail, so even, even like a snake, like they shed skin, you know, as long as we, we sit in the darkness, you know, we're not going to transform, you know, we're not going to get our wings, and God wants us to fly, you know, so we're going to talk about repentance, and this whole passage is about returning to the Lord, it's called a, a return to the Lord, so this, of course, is about people who bask in it, their, iniqu their iniquities, you know, you know, that are in idolatry, so Hosea is about people, um, the prophet. The prophet in this book was trying to teach people about idolatry and how he needs them, you know, to turn away from the idolatry. And these people were rich. And I'm going to say, it says right here, it says, Hosea, whose name means salvation, ministers to the northern kingdom of Israel, also called Ephraim, after his large trial outwardly, the nation is enjoying a time of prosperity and growth, but inwardly moral corruption and spiritual adultery permeate the people. Isaiah, instructed by God to marry a woman named Gomer, finds his domestic life to be an accurate and tragic dramatization of the unfaithfulness of God's people. So, and it says, during his calf century of prophetic ministry, Hosea repeatedly echoes his threefold message. It says, God's um, God's a horse, his sins of his people. Judgment is, is, is certain, but God's loyal love stands firm. So even though God is abhorring the sins of his people and, you know, passing judgment, he still has a loyal love that stands firm. But we got to turn away from the very thing that's, that makes him upset. So um, it's a choice at the, end of the, at the end of the day. And um, So I'm going to start from um, chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start from verse, I guess verse 4. And I'm going to go to some other scripture. It says, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me. For there is no Savior beside me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought, according to their pasture. So where were they filled? They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgot me. So those two scriptures alone, it's talking about the land of Egypt. So people in spiritual bondage, and of course the Egyptians held the Israelites captive in slavery. And God allowed this because of rebellion, because of um, idolatry, and of course, you know, Worshiping riches and you know lifestyle that's really rebellious instead of you know putting God at the forefront. 
because uh, you can have riches and money and wealth, but you can, you can lack riches in spirit. So um, you won't really be able to even um, enjoy it. And that, that's even in this world today. People have millions of dollars and still are killing themselves. So that just lets you know that it's a, it's a false, it's a false, um, false hope in this vein. So the name of verse 5 says, I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of a great drought. So God allowed his people to be in the, in the wilderness. And uh, the wilderness is the process, you know, going through the uh, affliction, through um, spiritual battles, suffering. So all of that is due to change. That's all. It's a purging moment. It's a purging process. And uh, you got to believe that you can get through it. You got to believe it's all for a good reason. And God wants you to get through it. You know, it's all for you to transform and become a better, your better self. And some people would rather be in Egypt, Egypt, instead of instead of the wilderness. So, uh, of course, people would rather still party, drug, still be and be and be in bondage of that than versus going through the process of being made over. So, of course, when God make you over, that doesn't exact that doesn't exempt you from being attacked by the enemy, but you won't be destroyed like everyone else. So that's the that's that's the covenant. When you have a covenant with God, you will be uh you will be protected. You know, and uh then at that, you'll see things for what it is. And if you allow God to open your eyes and open your ears, you'll be able to see and understand the things that's going on. So even the things that's going on around you, you know, versus other people that might be in Egypt. They might think all of this is normal, but you know, it's like a spirit of vexation. People's spirits are vexed, and uh, it's like this. It's like hypnosis almost. So, um, and I'm gonna go to verse six. It says, "According to their passion, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they have forgotten me." So people exalted themselves, you know, as being, you know, like they're in control. They exalt themselves in uh, ignorance. And, uh, of course, he's not putting their faith in God. So, uh, verse 7 says, Therefore will I be unto them as a lion, as a leopard, by the way will I observe them. Verse 8, I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of whelps, of the whelps, and will rend the call of their heart. And, and there will I devour them like a lion, the wild beast shall tear them. So, um, God is going to come back with destruction. He's going to come back with a wrath. He's going to come back with a sword. And um, only God's children that really yield and diligently seek His face and keep His statutes and His commandments, of course, are gonna be are gonna be redeemed. You know, they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be protected. You know, and uh, He wants to use us. We all have a purpose. He wants to use every every single one of us for His kingdom. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter if you you don't think you don't qualify. You qualify. And the enemy wants to put doubt in your mind. He wants you to think that you are not qualified. He wants you to think you're not good enough, that you're not strong enough. You know, that you know, it's just it's just the voices of the enemy. So through wisdom, you will learn how wicked the enemy is and how the powers that be of this world is principalities and rulers of darkness that want to hold you captive. They don't want you to step into the light. You know, and that's that's just what it is. And uh once you step into the light, you'll see things for what it is. And um it says verse verse seven. No, verse um verse nine. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is 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 thine help. I will be thy king. Where is where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities, and the judges of whom thou saidest give me a king and princess? So it says, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thy help. So basically we destroying ourselves as long as we pushing God away. And not walking in a uh, on a path that God God wants us to walk in, we're destroying ourselves and we're destroying the world. So that's why wars, nation against nation, kingdoms against nation. I mean, kingdoms against kingdoms. So that's that's what's going on, and that's going to transpire. And God, even though the world's going, you know, going haywire, only God's children that really abide in Him and God abide in them, they are going to be preserved. They are gonna be exempted from the destruction in the in the damnation that the world is in. Cause this earth is cursed. The whole earth is cursed because of you know, because of our forefathers, of course. 
in a, in a breaking the law. So it's up to other. It's up to us. It's for it's a time to be alive, and God puts you and me in in the forefront in the battlefield to, you know, change the world, save the world, save save our people, deliver them. And He's talking sincerely about the people who who are living in sin, not the people who you know been preaching all their life, but they, like the people who are sitting in darkness. They need they need saving. They need to be delivered because people are held captive spiritually and mentally. So um, it's up to us to bring spiritual justice to this world. So um, that's all I got for you today. Um, just keep it at that. And that's all about a return to the Lord, a return. So God wants us to return to him. You know, when things will open up to you, uh, you will get peace, a peace of mind. Versus when people are trying to lean on their own understanding and trying to lean on their own strength. When we're only human, we're powerless without God. And in, in every little way, we need to be leaning you know, leaning on God for everything. To jobs, to a career, to issues, to finances, to issues with people. You need to put God first. You need you need, you need need Him to speak to you, to um, how to approach everything you do. And uh, I used to try to do everything without God. You know, it only made things worse, and it backfired. You know, you know, through God you get clarity, you get insight, and you get peace. You know, God's love is better than any worldly love that you can ever get. So, um, that's all I got for you guys today. And uh, it's power in the name of Jesus. There's no. So if you, if you guys, if, if any of you guys. You want to accept the Lord. You want to join his family. Just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that he died on the cross for all of your sins. So you wouldn't perish for um, eternity, but have everlasting life in heaven. Just, and I believe that he, you are saved by the salvation once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yep. So that's all I got for you guys today. Blessings, peace. Stay positive. Stay strong. Um, don't, don't focus on the things that's of the world. Focus on God. Him only, and um, and then everything that you do do, make sure that, um, God, uh, make sure He approves it. You know, cause this, you know, having the time of our life, we put all our energy in the nine to five. We never put our energy in the God at all. Your whole thirty years of living, forty years of living, you never sat down and talked to God and asked Him, what what should I do in life? What would, what would be a what would be a blessing to people? How can you use me? How can I allow you to use me for for the for the saving of souls of people? So, you know, so that's all I got for, for right now. So, see y'all later.